Hello again folks, Skillful Mission here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my series, The Kings of Judah. Today we're going to be looking at the fifth king of Judah and his name is Jehoram or Joram, whichever one. I prefer Jehoram, I think. I don't know, I guess maybe it sounds a little better. But in the last episode, folks, we talked about his father, Jehoshaphat, one of the best kings that Judah had. And uh, if you did not watch that episode, go, uh, go click the link, excuse me, right above there. Go watch that episode first before you watch this one and so you can learn about a little bit about his father before uh, we talk about Jehoram today. But if you already watched that or you don't care to watch that episode, welcome to this episode. We, like I said, we're going to be talking about Jehoram, the fifth king of Judah. And like I said in the previous episode, folks, we are back to square one. And what I mean by that, folks, is we are back to the good old bad kings that Judah mostly had uh, throughout its existence as a kingdom. Yeah, so we're starting with uh, Jehoram and he was a pretty bad king, folks. I'll just say that right now. He was very wicked, uh, so to speak. So the book we're going to be in today is Second Kings, and we're going to be in chapter 8. Yes, you heard that right, folks. So in the last episode, we were in the book of First Kings at the very last chapter of the book. And uh, now we've jumped uh, eight chapters into the book of Second Kings, and this is where it picks off picks up again uh, about the kings of Judah after Jehoshaphat had died. This is where it picks up with uh, King Jehoram. And so it starts off again in chapter 8. Uh, let me read real quick just to make sure. Yep, it starts in chapter 8 and we start in verse uh, 16 of chapter 8. So that's where we're going to be at right now. And verse 16, pretty much same thing again. Uh, the king of Israel at this time is uh, Joram who is the son of uh, King Ahab of Israel. Now this is the fifth year of Joram's reign. And this year, uh, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. So Jehoram has now just become uh, king of Judah after his father Jehoshaphat is no longer around. And at verse 17 talks about his age and a little bit of detail about him. He was 32 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned a pretty short length. He reigned for eight years as king of Judah. And verse 18, this is where things start getting real bad because it immediately talks about how he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. Now, I don't know if you folks realize this by now, but every single king that Israel had after the kingdom of Israel and Judah split into two. Every single king that Israel had up until Assyria destroyed them was bad or wicked or evil. Any word like that you want to use, every single one was bad and evil. None of them were good or okay, all strictly bad and wicked. So, verse 18 talks about how he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel pretty much the same wicked and evil way that you could possibly walk in. You know, it, the kings of Israel set a pretty good example of how you want to, how to walk in the evil way and the wrong direction from God. And the kings of Israel were a prime example, and that's the example that Jehoram uh, took. That's basically what verse uh, 18 uh, talks about. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, they always mention that. It's never a joke when these kings are doing evil in the sight of the Lord. It's pretty bad. Not only for the king himself, but also for the nation as well. It talks about in verse 19, though, because the Lord is so merciful and because he loved David, for his sake he would not destroy uh, Judah, as because God promised to give him a, one, of the, one or two of the tribes uh, of Judah that, could, that would still uh, provide the line or the seed for Jesus Christ to be born. You know, God told David that his son Jesus will be born from King David's royal seed sometime in the future. And so that's pretty much the biggest reason why God would not destroy, you know, the royal seed of King David. And that's why he wouldn't destroy Judah right now, at least not yet. Uh, but that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much the biggest reason why God would not destroy uh, Judah right now. Because he loved David so much, and for his sake, he would not destroy them. And it pretty much, it talks about how Edom, they revolted also under uh, Judah. This talks about this in uh, verse 20 all the way to about 22, I believe. They revolted against Judah, and so Jehoram is really messing things up tremendously as king of Judah. 
And it talks about in verse 23 how the rest of the acts of Jehoram and all that he did, are they not written in this book? The same old stuff. And in verse 24, it talks about uh, Jehoram, he slept uh, with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And his son uh, Ahaziah, I think I said that right, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. So uh, Jehoram's reign was pretty short, and after him, Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. And you would think, once again, this is where it would end, not much detail about uh, Jehoram, but you'd be wrong again, because uh, for every king of Judah, and even for most of the kings of Israel, if you go to Second Chronicles, it gives more details about their reign and what they did. And I looked this up when I was studying this, folks, some of the stuff in here I really couldn't believe and I actually did not know until now. And we're gonna, we're, you're gonna see what I mean, folks, about uh, Jehoram. So if you go to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 21, uh, from verse 1 to 20, that's where it talks about uh, Jehoram again and gives more in-depth details about his reign as king. And they're pretty bad, to say the least. So it starts in verse 1, you know, the same thing, Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and Jehoram, or Joram, his son, reigned in his stead. And uh, if you get down to verse 4, this is where things get really bad, and this is where Jehoram starts doing some really bad things, uh, personally, for himself. Now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, I'm quoting scripture here, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword and divers also of the princes of Israel. So here we have Jehoram, whose father was a prime example of what a king, a good king, should be for a kingdom. But Jehoram has just followed after the example of the kings of Israel. But not only that, he's got more ideas in his mind that he would like to implement. And these ideas are pretty wicked. For starters, in the verse right here, to strengthen himself and to make sure that no other family members could maybe possibly unseat him or plot his murder or his death, he decides to kill all his brethren that were also in line for the throne just in case something happens to him. He slew all of his brethren with the sword. I mean, it doesn't get much more brutal than that, folks. Not only that, but also of the princes of Israel. So. Jehoram is a flat-out murderer right now in this verse, folks. He not only murdered his own family members, but also other people in Israel, princes of Israel, all because he was power-hungry and just he just wanted to make sure that nobody could be plotting against him to unseat him from the throne. He's also quite greedy, folks, for the throne, and he's power-hungry. That's pretty messed up. And that's why, this is one of the biggest reasons why Jehoram was a pretty bad king. One of the, quite possibly one of the worst that the kingdom of Judah would ever have. When you get down to verse 6, it talks again how he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. And here's one reason why. It talks about in verse 6, for, because one of his wives, I'm not, I think he had more than one wife, but, you know, it talks about in his verse that his wife was a daughter, one of the daughters of King Ahab, one of the most wicked kings that Israel ever had. He married one of his daughters. And so you could probably imagine that Ahab's daughter, who was probably a worshiper of uh, Baal or some other false god, would no doubt influence Jehoram to worship these false gods as well. And look, let's make one thing clear, folks. Again, just Jehoram walked not in the ways of the Lord. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. He no doubt probably worshipped other false gods. So that's why Judah at this time was probably in utter turmoil right now. Remember, and I also mentioned the Edomites, they revolted on the hand of Judah. If you read the next few verses, that's what it talks about uh, right now. But here's where things get interesting, folks. In verse 12 of chapter 21 in Second Chronicles, it talks about how Elijah the prophet... He was, he was talking to Je uh, Jehoram here, uh, but it was in a writing. And this is what Elijah had to say. I'm going to quote this because I think it's very important. 
Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, because thou hast not because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa his grandfather, king of Judah, but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring, like the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Ooh. I don't know about you folks, but that hurts. All the brethren that he slew were better than him. They were probably made a better king than Jehoram would have. Then when you get to verse 14, it talks about how, Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, and thy children, and thy wives, and thy goods, and thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels until thy bowels fall out by reason of the, of the sickness day by day. So not only is Elijah here mentioning all the terrible wicked things that Jehoram has done and has made Judah to do, but he's also telling Jehoram but that because you have done all this, the Lord is basically going to strike you with this disease. And it's going to be with you until the day of your death because thou hast sinned against God immensely. One of the worst kings that Judah ever had. Because of this, the Lord's going to strike Jehoram with a sickness that's going to be with him till the day of his death. Verse 16, Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit, the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians. Things get worse. And they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house and his sons also and his wives, so that there was never a son left him, save Jehoiaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. So not only did Je uh, Jehoram find out he was going to be strict with this uncurable disease, the Philistines and the Arabians came and they, sla they slaughtered, I guess you could say, Judah. They took away all the substance of the king's house. They came up upon Judah. They smote it. And now things are just basically back to square ones. This is basically what happens, folks, when a supposedly righteous nation that's supposed to be righteous has a bad leader. This is basically what happens. Not only does the leader suffer, but pretty much the entire nation suffers. And that's basically what's also happening here in America right now. So verse 18 talks about how the Lord smote him with an uncurable disease. Verse 19, it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness. So he died of sore diseases, diseases, excuse me. And his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Wow. So after two years of suffering with this sickness, he finally gave up the ghost. And the people probably hated him for what he did to Judah. They didn't even give him a proper burning, like a ritual, like a tradition that they did to probably all the kings of Judah. Because they didn't see him as a worthy one to be put under such a tradition. And verse 20, 32 years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years, and departed without being desired. Howbeit they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the kings. <laughs> it gets worse, folks. And that's basically the end of Jehoram's story. Like I said, one of the worst kings that Judah ever had, and he's basically brought Judah back to square one, where they've just been slaughtered by their enemies, embarrassed, the Lord struck their leader with an incurable disease, and it seems like there isn't a bright future ahead. Uh, there pretty much isn't, at least for a while, up until the ne up until like after these next two uh, rulers. It's it's really gonna be a dark future for Judah right now. Uh, like and like they said, uh, Ahaziah is the one we're going to talk about in the next episode. Actually, you know, this episode was actually longer than Jehoshaphat, which was strange. I hope you folks don't mind, and I hope you folks enjoyed uh, this episode. If you did, leave a like and comment, subscribe during the ICD, Day, and folks, I'll see you in the next episode of this or whatever video I make. Take care, folks, and God bless you all.